Let's look at solutions to a system of equations by graphing. So we're going to graph the two equations, and then it asks us which describes the system of equations, either no solution, infinitely many, or one. So let's just think about our, our basics here. When we graph a system of equations, one of three things is, e is going to happen. Either our lines intersect. If that happens, we have one solution, and that one solution would be the point of intersection. Another possibility is that our lines could be parallel, which means they never intersect. Well, if our solution is the intersection point and they never intersect, then that means there would be no solution. And the third possibility is that the two lines are actually the same line. And when that happens, the second one is graphed directly on top of the first. And that means every point on the one line is actually on both, and that's where you would say infinitely many, I'll use our infinity symbol here, solutions. Okay, so with that in mind, let's graph these two equations and see which one of those situations we have, either intersecting lines, parallel lines, or the same line. So we're going to start by graphing the top equation, y equals negative 1x plus 6, and it helps to keep in mind that this equation is in slope-intercept form. It looks like y equals mx plus b. Okay, so we know m, or the number you see in front of x, represents our slope. We're going to think of that as our rise over run. And b, or the number you see added or subtracted at the end, represents our y-intercept, meaning that's the point where the line crosses the y-axis which is our vertical axis here. So for my first point, I'm going to start at my y-intercept of 6. So for a y-intercept of 6, I'm going to stay in the center on my y-axis. Since it says plus 6, I'm going to go up to positive 6. And that's the first point I'm going to put on my graph. Now from there, I want to count out my slope. And remember, for slope, we're always thinking rise over run. So we want to think of our slope as a fraction. Right, the rise or the top number tells us how many to go up or down, and the run or the bottom number tells us how many to go from left to right. So if my slope in this case was negative 1, as a fraction, that would be negative 1 over 1. So that means I'm going to go down 1 and over 1, or down 1 and right 1. Okay, so that's my first line, y equals negative 1x plus 6, starting at our y-intercept of 6, counted our slope to go down 1 over 1. Okay, so we're going to use the same idea on the bottom equation, which is also in slope-intercept form. In this case, our y-intercept is negative 3. So that means on our graph, on the y-axis, which is the vertical axis going straight up and down, we're going to start at negative 3. So 1, 2, 3 below 0. And it's not numbered here, but you can tell it's going to be in between negative 2 and negative 4. And from there, we're going to count my slope. And again, we're thinking of slope as rise over run. Now in this case, it's already written as a fraction. Our slope is 1 over 2. So we're going to go up 1 and over 2. So from our y-intercept, we're going to count up 1 over 2. OK, so I want you guys to take a look at what happened here. And we have two lines that intersect. And actually, if we want to be really specific, we can even find where the intersection point is. Because that intersection point would be the specific solution. So you can see that these two lines intersect at the point 6, 0, because it's 6 to the right and 0 up or down. But that one point is the only solution. That means we have one solution to this equation, or to this system of equations.
All right, so we have a similar problem. They gave us a system of two equations, and we want to figure out whether it has no solution, one solution, or infinitely many. So again, we're going to look at, do we have intersecting lines? That would be one solution. Do we have parallel lines, which would be no solution? Or are they the same line, which would be infinitely many? So I see that my equations are written in slope-intercept form, right? They look like y equals mx plus b. So I know m, or the number you see in front of x, is going to represent my slope. And that b, or the number you see added or subtracted at the end, is my y-intercept, meaning where those lines are going to cross my y-axis. So my first one, the one that's highlighted in blue right now, has a y-intercept of negative 8. So that's the first point I'm going to put on my graph. I'm going to go on the y-axis down to negative 8. Now from there, I want to count out my slope. Now be careful, because right now, my slope is given as a mixed number, 1 and a half. It's going to be easier to count that if I take it and make it an improper fraction. So 1 times 2 is 2, plus the 1 gives me 3. So this is the same thing as 3 over 2. So when I count my slope, I'm going to go up 3 and over 2. All right, so we have the first line on our graph. Now let's take a look at the second line, y equals negative 6x plus 7. This equation is also in slope-intercept form. My y-intercept is at positive 7, so the first point I'm going to put on my graph is to go to 7 on the y-axis. Now from here, my slope is negative 6. And to make that a fraction, since it's a whole number, I can just put it over 1. That's the same thing as saying negative 6 over 1. So I'm going to count out my slope by going down 6 and over 1. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, over 1. Okay, so you can see, again, I have intersecting lines, so that means I have one solution. Okay, so we're going to graph our system and see whether it has infinitely many, no solutions, or one solution. For my first line, I can see that that looks like slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept, which is positive 9. So on that graph, I'm going to go on my y-axis and plot my first point at 9. Now from there, I want to count out my slope. In this case, my slope is negative 1 over 2. I'm thinking rise over run, so I'm going to go down 1 and over 2. So from my y-intercept, down 1 and over 2. Okay, now let's graph our second line. This time, our y-intercept is positive 4. So I'm going to put my first point on the graph at 4. My slope is positive 1 over 3. So that's telling me to go up 1 over 1, 2, 3. So again, I have intersecting lines, which would indicate one solution, and that one solution would be at my point of intersection. Now guys, you might have noticed that all three of the first systems had one solution, but that's actually pretty common. Most of the time they do. Infinitely many solutions or no solutions are kind of our special cases that come up every once in a while. For most systems, they're going to be two different lines so that more than likely are not parallel, so most of the time we do get intersecting lines with one solution. Every once in a while, we'll have parallel lines where we can say no solution, or we'll have the same line where it's infinitely many. But in this case, just one. All right, so we have a very similar question. We're going to graph our equations. For the top one, we have y equals negative 1 and 5 sevenths x minus 7. So I'm going to start by going to my y-intercept, which is negative 7. So on my y-axis, since it's a negative, I'm going to make sure I go down 7 and plot my first point. Now my slope for this line is negative 1 and 5 sevenths. And again, instead of having a mixed number, I want to turn that into an improper fraction. 
So it's going to be negative. I'm going to keep that sign. And then remember, an easy way to turn your mixed number into a improper fraction is to multiply the number in front by the denominator. So 1 times 7 is 7. Add the numerator. So 7 plus 5 gives us 12. And then you just keep whatever the denominator was. So I'm going to keep that as a 7. And to kind of step this back, if I'm going a little too fast for you there, another way to think about that, you could say, all right, well, we already know we are going to have a negative, so we'll bring that negative out front. One means a whole number. So a whole number I could write as 1 over 1, 2 over 2, 3 over 3. In this case, I might want to write it as 7 over 7, so I can kind of combine or add, and I'm just going to leave that negative out front because we know the whole thing is going to be negative at the end. So we can kind of combine or add the fractions together. And then when you add them, that's kind of where we're getting that 12 over 7 from. Because when you add fractions, you add the numerator. Once you have that common or same denominator, it stays the same. Okay, so either way you want to look at that, we wind up with negative 12 over 7 for our slope, which means when we think rise over run, we want to go down 12 and over 7. But I don't really have room to go down 12. So instead of going down 12, right, we said our slope was negative 12 over 7. Remember, we get to pick. If I wanted to group it at the top, I could say down 12 and over 7. Or if I want to group that negative on the bottom, I could say I'm going to go up 12. And that negative on the bottom would say instead of going to the right 7, I'm going to reverse it and go left 7. And I'm going to pick that option just to make sure I have room on my graph to plot my next point. So I'm going to go up 12 and left 7. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And remember, we're going left now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, let's take a look at the bottom equation. Our y-intercept here is negative 4, and our slope, again, is a mixed number. So I'm going to take that and turn it into an improper fraction. I know my whole answer is going to be negative, so I'm just going to bring that negative sign out front and then work with the 1 and 2 sevenths. Remember, we said the easiest way is to say 1 times 7 is 7, add the 2 is 9, and then you keep the same denominator. So negative 1 and 2 sevenths is the same thing as negative 9 over 7. So I can go down 9 and write 7, or if I want to group that negative on the bottom, I can go up 9 and left 7. And I'm going to pick that option just to make sure I have plenty of room on my graph. So up 9, left 7. So from my y-intercept, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.